independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. There was a Washington Post investigation going on, and the inquirer, the, the letter says, you write the following in the Washington Post, or the implicit threat is we publish these photographs. Things to the Washington Post, what they should say. Which Bezos says would have been false anyway, because he feels apparently that there was political motivation for what uh, the what the inquirer was doing. Your question is, is it blackmail? Is it a crime? Is it extortion? My answer is, I don't know. I, I think it is worthy of investigation. Is it or isn't it? And will we or won't we? Is it or isn't it can be debated. Will we? Absolutely. And by that, I mean, see his wiener. Let's not pretend stuff's going to get out there. And I think he's okay with it. I think he's absolutely okay with it. I, I, and 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 he's going to take them head on. He is. He's worth how many hundred plus billion? Right. He did this. Just shows you that even at an advanced age compared to the youngsters of the world that men will do silly things as will women when it comes to love how they got a hold of these things that will be you know debated and found out i'm sure sooner rather than later especially if a billion dollars you'll figure a hundred billion dollars you'll figure out a way to get a hold of something but some of the stuff inside of this a selfie of mr bezos fully clothed eh, harmless scantily clad shot with short trunks Ooh, a naked selfie in the bathroom while wearing a wedding ring, wearing nothing but a white towel, and the top of his pubic region can be seen, right? A <clears throat> blank pick, a Richard pick, if you will. They've got apparently nine of these. <laughs> they got the, got to get the best angle. <laughs> there you go. All right, maybe bring in some lighting. You apparently got nine of those. And then Miss Sanchez, we get to see some of her nether regions as well. And he's just like, I'm going to take this on. This is what you guys are doing. There you go. You guys want to take me on? Well, here you go. It's already out there, right? The embarrassment of it at the beginning is done. And if you want to do this, Let's do this. It's disgraceful journalism. It's disgraceful behavior. Whether it's an actual crime, I am frankly not prepared to say at this point. Uh, what 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 are the I mean? What is the difference between what they're doing and what you would think of as extortion or blackmail? Well, I mean, if they're saying you publish something in your paper, I mean, it's like a kidnapper saying you publish this or I'm going to release you know these photos. right. But but they they would argue is we're just trying to get the Washington Post to to report accurately and we're using the leverage we have that's what they would argue it's a free speech it's a blackmail what is it if it was you or i we'd be like oh my god what about oh geez but then you're onto that journalistic side of things right and that's just and then you run into the trump friends with mr pecker who owns ami and the acquire right and you've got relationships with, apparently, Ms. Sanchez's brother. I mean, there's just all this convoluted weirdness that goes around it. And, and it's, 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 it's an interesting thing. But I think he's, he's ready to do battle. And, and this, is like, this just shows you, though. It's sex sells. In the end, sex sells. Absolutely. Sex sells. And it also shows you the human nature of human beings. Because if he was fat and gross and all of these kind of things, he probably uh, he probably maybe would have done some of the things. The reality is, though, I'm a good looking dude. I'm worth a hundred billion dollars. Maybe I'm a little blessed, if you will. Uh, yeah, we'll take it straight on. She's beautiful. You want to fight? Blah. There, there's something to that. I'm telling you guys, there's something to that, right? It's a reason that Adam Levine took his shirt off last week. And the reason that you and I don't do the same thing. And I got a ton of tats as well. But I don't look like that. I don't. There's just something about that. It's human nature.
want people to think we look good. All of these kind of things. The embarrassment's already out there. Is it or isn't it a crime? And by the way, isn't the first, apparently, time that AMI, the Inquirer, have threatened certain things. Journalist Ronan Farrow tweeted that he and at least one other prominent journalist also received threats of blackmail from AMI. He says that they were targeted while working on stories about the National Enquirer's arrangement with Trump. We reached out to AMI for comment, but did not hear back. So we'll see. Interesting, for sure. Sex sells. And it also shows you that as human beings... We continue to do stupid things just because you have all the money on earth that you could ever dream of from starting in your garage 24 years ago and delivering packages to the mailbox yourself and doing those things to where you are today that, yes, a woman and or a man and a relationship and lust can get you to do stuff. You can. That you wouldn't think, oh, I would never do. Yeah. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. On top of all of this going on, there's a battle upon thine hill as acting AG that Whitaker guy, right? Who looks like uh, kind of looks like uh, Bezos if he would let himself go, uh, uh, and and you know all of this stuff that has to go on with Trump and 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 all these investigations and Mueller and this guy has been very. Uh, he's been very much a, a, a against the the investigation, the way it's been handled in the whole nine yards. Why did President Trump choose to replace Attorney General Sessions with an outspoken critic of the special counsel instead of with any number of qualified individuals who had already received Senate confirmation? Ooh, why was that? Right, like in the and like in it, it's another one of those situations where they're arguing and they're fighting. And they're arguing and they're fighting and everybody's trying to grab their 15 minutes, right? And at one time, Whitaker says, I believe your five minutes are up because each one of these these people that get to grill him get five minutes and and they, they're pushing him, you know, and you should at some point in time ask some serious questions. But we know this isn't about the answer in many ways. It's about the question asking for them and the grandstanding. You could put anybody there as long as they get their five minutes. And uh, this guy doesn't seem to be, you know, like he's ready to roll as well. I will answer the committee's questions as best I can, but I will continue the longstanding executive branch practice of not disclosing information that may be subject to executive privilege, such as the contents of conversations with the president. They're angry about that. Well, we want to know. We want to know what you guys are talking about. Well, that's executive privilege, right? Isn't that? Doesn't the president at least get that executive privilege in some of this stuff? And trust me, there's enough leaks coming out of there that the privilege isn't as executive and and or privilegey as you'd like to think. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. And then with all of that going on today, right? So you got Bezos and 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 the Inquirer and what kind of stuff is going on there and 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 all these things swirling around and of course the relationship with the guy who owns the Inquirer and the Bezos and the Post and the whole nine yards. Then you got Whitaker on there. Then you've got, yes, the tax return fight and one of five investigations going on right now and more will come and they're coming hard to find out what trump's finances are because they're coming how many years do you want the general practice and custom has been for candidates for vice president and president to provide several years of tax returns uh, including current years so each president has provided i think it's up to the last eight to ten years of their tax returns so that you know people can evaluate what kinds of businesses do they own what kinds of interests do they have financial interests do they have and uh, again to answer the question whether or not uh, the policies that they are pursuing benefit them personally Mm. It's going to be interesting, right? Because they're going to do all they can to get everything they can off this president. And they want to know, has Saudi Arabia and Russia at any time loaned him money? So if five years ago they loaned him money, then that must point to the fact that he is definitely Putin's puppet. Saudi Arabia loaned him money, then for sure... 
they must have something on him or over him. And if they didn't, in, you know, in these eight years, maybe they got to go back another eight or ten years. They're going to do everything they possibly can because they believe that there is something there. And they're going to look everywhere. They're going to overturn every single rock to find what they think is out there. At least when it comes to his finances at this point in time over the last several years. And if not, then we'll go back a dozen years. And if not a dozen, we'll go back 24. There's got to be something is the way that they feel. And they're going to try to connect every single dot they possibly can. Maybe they find something. Maybe they don't. But if it doesn't end here in the way that they want, chances are they're going to go somewhere else and try to find what they can there. At some point in time, it will become harassment. But for right now, this is what they think they're going to do. And we'll see what happens. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. A lot of stuff to get to today. We're going to get to it all. The new Green Deal, of course. The new Green Disaster. Oh, my Lord. Some of that stuff in there is just insane. But, you know, here's something I want you guys to think about for just a second. If they're able to put in 25, 30 percent of this, think about what that could do to society across the board. Not just 100 percent, right? Like not 100 percent, not not even 50 percent, 25, 30 percent of this changes a lot. And not all for the good. Just want to point that out. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Hope you're doing all this beautiful Friday. When it comes to costly car repairs, you need options, right? And what ends up happening? You get it towed somewhere, somewhere that mm, you, you get, because you're looking for the cheapest possible solution to that problem that will keep your car running. And that's never a good thing. How's that work out for most people? Whack, it's still expensive and it doesn't get you what you want. Or you get car shield, and guess what? Boom. Things are amazing. Things are great. Because you see, you get 24 7 roadside assistance. You can take your car somewhere where you know it's going to get fixed and take care of you in a way that, well, quite frankly, you can't put a price on. That's the beauty of what car shield is able to do. 24 7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. And again, take it to the shop that you trust and you know the best. Even the dealership, they'll get them paid directly. It's simple and easy. You just pay a small deductible and away you go. My friend just went through it. If you add in the $1,900 repair in the five days that she had a rental car while they waited for parts, it was well over $2,500. She paid a small deductible. Everything else was taken care of. Save yourself thousands of future car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle protection like I did. Call 800-CAR-6100. Mention code Benson or visit carshield.com. Use code Benson to save 10%. That's carshield.com. Code Benson saves you 10%, right? Or check them out online at carshield.com. Look at all of the things and plans they have for you. And then you say, I want that one. You type in code Benson. Save yourself 10% right there. A deductible may apply. It's the Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. Who hasn't felt the frustration? I ordered an Amazon package. It's just about $30, and they stole it. Stealing something delivered by the U.S. Postal Service can be a federal crime, but for other stuff... Most packages fall into what we call a Class C misdemeanor, like a speeding ticket. State Representative Gene Wu wants to pump up the penalty for package theft. There's a certain level of violation that's higher than just stealing a pack of gum. He wants to see porch pirates sent to state jail for up to two years. Porch. Pirates shouldn't it be about the theft of how much is in there. I mean, if you feel it, if you steal a candle, and remember, it's kind of like porch pirate bingo because you don't know what's in it and it's still wrong. That's why you guys should get blank home security. But the reality is, is it? I've, I've always wondered that it's like, I'm gonna go steal what's ever on here. What is it? Don't know. It's like when you open up that bag or, or that box of chocolates. And there's no real distinction. It just is chocolate. You don't know what you're biting into. I think Jim Gaffigan said, this could be great or this could be awful. Oh, darn, it's toothpaste. Because you don't know what's in it. You don't. Arr, porch pirates. 
And I think all porch pirates should have to ride around on a little golf cart that is shaped like a uh, boat. Wouldn't that be great, too? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us each and every day at this time. And TGIF, it is this kind of day that we do. We deliver you this in ways that only we can. We call it our urban word of the day. Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban word of the day. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Because it's Friday, so yay. Put them together, you got fry, yay! Oh, yeah. You see, see that trending? fry yay. we're getting it out there, kids. Aren't you happy? Then celebrate. It ain't Friday, it's fry yay! Your urban word of the day. Thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that I'll understand you. That there was the urban word of the day. We damn stretched your cranium. We contacted hospitals in several dozen cities. And Ryan Felton with Consumer Reports says they've uncovered at least 1,500 e-scooter injuries nationwide since 2017, though the actual number is likely much higher because the record-keeping is lagging behind. About half the hospitals that we spoke to said that they don't actually have the capability to track the injuries at this point. The scooter injuries that are on the record are across the board, ranging from minor fractures to serious head trauma. I don't get the scooter thing. I see them everywhere I go when I'm in Tempe or in and around towns, and I see them, and I just think to myself, uh, what a horrible idea. I'm going to hand you a scooter, right? And you're going to what? Like a younger generation, okay, maybe, but I see a lot of people that are in their 30s and 40s who didn't grow up on a scooter, who didn't really grow up doing skateboarding, who really don't look athletic, and they're awful at that, and they run into stuff. Just feels like a lawsuit waiting to happen. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I know when I fall sometimes, I stay falled. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. And I am so incredibly excited that we are going to transition this country into the future and we are not going to be dragged behind by our past. Today is not just a, a big day for us as a party, us as a movement, but this is a big day for activists all over the country. Today is a big day for people who have been left Behind Climate change and our environmental challenges are one of the biggest existential threats to our way of life. The Green New Disaster. The Green Dream. Very green, very expensive, has a bit to do with climate. Vague on the details of how to pay for it. It's a great article in Reason uh, dot com talking about the fact that they had gone through something where they broke down what it would cost to put us in a situation where we got off fossil fuels just when it comes to our homes and and things of that nature. And they put it about at two thousand thirty and this, they did this in 2015. They said it was, and this was Stanford University, uh, Professor Jacobs up there, uh, said it would be about $7 trillion. Other people have come out and say $13 trillion. Let's split the difference and say right around $10 trillion just to run the grid. Think about that for a second. With hundreds of thousands of wind turbines, both offshore and on land, you... you Insane. Insane. But this has nothing to do with climate change and all to do with how they 
perceive how unfair the world is and how they can move things in a direction where government takes more control and they make everything fairer. And if they have to use the climate as the catalyst to kick everything off to their social justice, making the world a better place based on the way that it should be, which sounds more like uh, Chairman Mao and his great leap forward than anything else. Be prepared. Small incremental policy solutions are not enough. There is no justice and there is no combating climate change without addressing what has happened to indigenous communities. That means that there is no fixing our economy without addressing the racial wealth gap. That means that we are not going to transition to renewable energies without also transitioning frontline communities and coal communities into economic opportunity as well. Hmm. The wealth gap. It's what it is. It's the wealth gap. Let's get this thing done. Now look, and it, are there really wealthy people out there? Yeah. Tons of wealthy people out there. Right? You look at what's out there. There's a lot of people got a lot of money. and A lot of people don't have any money. But this right here is just going to break the bank. The amount of money it would cost to even try to implement a portion of this could radically destroy our economy. It is, ne- and, and it's funny when people say you can't talk about Venezuela and compare the the hopes and dreams of what AOC and the Bernie Sanders and the people of the world here who talk about the fact that they're democratic socialist or whatever they're supposed to be you can't talk about this not fair no it's absolutely fair it is 110 percent fair some of the stuff in this is insane it really is i mean we could take the most and and and, and i don't want to i don't want to take the most absurd i tweeted out today those are who you know like one of the things about that's in it is people who are unable to work will get a bunch of money, right? You're going to get a salary of some sort, but also people who are unwilling to work. But let's just take out the the crazy stuff, right? And we'll just go with the we'll, we'll meet in the middle some of this stuff. Is nuts. The thought of trying to do bullet trains everywhere? Right? The thought of that is is California can't even build a damn bullet train between Bakersfield and Chowchilla. What was supposed to cost $10 billion is now closing in on $100 billion, and there's not even a train. And when and if it ever gets done at the price of God knows what, who is going to get on it? Nobody. But you don't need... To implement it all to see where this is headed. You don't need that. No, 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 no. You only need 15, 20, 25% of this to be implemented to shift our nation. And to make it something that, quite frankly, is... uh, I, I Again, I don't know... Which 15, 20, or 25 percent, but you've got a lot of young people who are going to be big, the biggest part of the voting block that look at her and are behind her. They're influencers, and she's the biggest of influencers. And they're going, ah, yeah, you know what? This stuff sounds great, right? Like everybody gets a unicorn. Everybody gets a rainbow. Everybody gets all of this great stuff. It's going to be awesome. And it's because, and, and you tug at the heartstrings. It's about the justice of it all. It's about the justice of all. This is the justice right here. No. What it will do to us if they were to implement even a quarter of this stuff. Because it's not about anything more than the justice and control that they want. They want they want government to be your God. 
That's the dream. And they could say it's not, oh, don't, no, we're going to we're going to be just like Norway. We're going to be just like all of the Scandinavian countries, which you're not. This monolithic society that's over there is it's much smaller where everybody it, it, it's not even well, you know, everybody's kind of everybody's equal across the board in a lot of things there. Most everybody's can read and write at college levels, like 99% of them. They're all competent and stuff. They're all capitalists. They just understand that in the world that they live in and their, their world that is much smaller than ours, that they're all kind of rowing in the same direction. Right? But now that they've seen immigration start to grow and a lot of other things, things are starting to get a little bit wonky. But they're a capitalist society that understands, hey, we pay a lot of high taxes for our social safety nets. But we're looking around now and we're seeing a lot of people come here who aren't pulling their weight. Who are enjoying the fruits of our labor and we're not fans of that. And if you go back and you look at a lot of these Scandinavian countries, when they really went hardcore socialists, because they're not, they're capitalist free market societies with high taxes, and they'll tell you that. We're not socialist nations. Stop calling us that. But when you go and you look, when they did try to do some of this stuff in the 70s, it went to hell in a handbasket, and they're like, we got to roll this thing back. This is getting ugly. They're using things to tug at heartstrings, to talk about social justice. And some of this stuff is coming. And they radically want to remake what we are as a country. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Matthew Whitaker getting grilled on the hill. He's the acting AG. They're coming hard for him because they want him to understand that they're coming for the president, right? And we know that they got rid of Sessions, and the reason they got rid of Sessions is because they brought you in, and you've been critical of the Mueller report. We want to know what you and the president are feeling and talking about there, Matt. I will answer the committee's questions as best I can, but I will continue the longstanding executive branch practice of not disclosing information that may be subject to executive privilege, such as the contents of conversations with the president. Not good enough. We want to know what he's saying. We want to know what he's talking about. We don't want to wait for leaks. We want to know. You need to tell us, Matt. Let's tell producer Phil. He kind of looks like he's a bad guy. Like if you were if you were to build a, a, like a, a a bad movie character that was maybe a white supremacist, it would be him. Or 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 put him in an all white suit and make him this bad guy that was fighting against you know like Captain you know America or something like that. That's kind of what he looks like. Matt. Oh my lord. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us, Jeff Bezos. It is uh, interesting. He's coming hard for the Inquirer, right? Wants to know, hey, how'd you guys get those things? You know, first it was supposed to be she sent him to her friend, and then her friend somehow potentially took them, but now they're saying that's not how it happened. How did they get it? I don't know how they get a lot of their stuff, right? They don't tell their sources, but you know they pay for stuff. He's saying, you trying to blackmail me, right, to get me to change some stuff in the post, talking about the fact that you got wiener pictures and you got her nether region pictures and you got all of these things. And, yeah, you're trying to do that, huh? That's what you're trying to do. Well, guess what? Here's some apples. I'm worth a gazillion, kabillion, quadrillion dollars. Go ahead. This is, this is it right here. And they're saying, well, it's not really blackmail. You know, people are saying, hey, it was uh, right at first refusal. Hey, I got these pictures. Are you interested in them? How'd you get them? I'm not going to say how we got them. But if you could do this, is it blackmail? Is it not blackmail? It's going to be very interesting. But there's no doubt those pictures are going to end up on the web. No doubt they are. And this is why when, when stars don't want to turn their cameras over to police, or anybody for that matter, but particular stars don't want to do that. And when people got mad at, oh, Tom Brady must have cheated. He broke his, you know why? 
Because if I turn my phone over, right, and you're a star, and what do you think happens? Magically, stuff gets leaked that has nothing to do with anything else because somebody knows I can leak this to the Inquirer or where the Guardian or the New York Post, and they're going to pay me X amount of dollars, and I'm making 15 bucks an hour? That's why. I see why. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Chad Benson Show. Experiencing separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad 24-7 at his website, chadbensonshow.com. And on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. Show. Never feel lonely again. Led by the Lego movie, The Second Part. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. This year's weak box office might start to turn around this weekend. The Lego movie sequel is looking at a first place, $50 million plus debut, which would be solid, but well behind the $69 million the first movie pulled in on the same weekend five years ago. I'm making partner, baby. The Taraji P. Henson comedy, What Men Want, is looking at a strong $20 million or so second place opening, perhaps half that for Liam Neeson's Cold Pursuit, and even less for the horror film, The Prodigy. Yeah, The Prodigy, I might see that this weekend. It looks actually uh, interesting. Uh, and again, a horror movie, it costs $6 million to make. Just virtually nothing compared to all of these. Worldwide, I bet you it does $30 million. That's why they continue to make horror movies over and over again. The Liam Neeson thing is very interesting because now what I'm hearing is that they are getting huge pressure because he is in the movie Men in Black International with Liam Hemsworth that comes out, I believe, this summer to electric, electronically scrub him from the film. Get rid of him. Get him gone. I, again, I have no idea what he said the other day about his, I don't know if it was his cousin or friend who was raped. It was 40-plus years ago. It was Northern Islanders, understand the times. And she said it was a black man, and he said he, he grabbed a kosh, which is a club, and he went out for a week looking for that person. He said he was going to kill somebody. He was going to kill any black man, and there weren't a lot of them there. He didn't find anybody. He was angry. He felt helpless. He was honest, and now that's coming back to bite him in the ears. Just want to let you guys understand that for a second. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Uh, Georgia. USA Today has just broken down the top weirdest laws per state, and I'm about to reveal Georgia's top weirdest law. It is illegal to eat fried chicken with a fork. According to a Gainesville proclamation passed in 1961 designed to promote Gainesville as a poultry center, they made it illegal to eat fried chicken with a fork. In 2009, a woman was actually arrested as a practical joke for violating the law, but was later pardoned. Yes, this law is actually still in existence today. Speaking of laws, you under the insanity of the People's Republic of California, this year, 1,016 new laws went into the book. So soak that up for a second, right? So the thing about this across the country, how many laws in your state went into the books? And some of the laws, yeah, you look at them, you say, okay, I get that. And I know they're looking at doing the texting law and changing some of those things uh, for, you know, to maybe add a point onto your license. Because right now, it's the texting, if you get caught, it's in, depending on the state. But in California, it's not very much. But some of the stuff that they put on there, obviously the straw ban and the whole nine yards with that. But also on all sit-down restaurants, apparently, the only drinks that can be offered on the menu for kids are milk and water now you can get other things but it's another one of those people's republic of california we're going to do everything we possibly can to nanny you and nudge you in a direction that we think you should go 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter so when you listen to that georgia law that was put on the books when the california laws they're on the books now and they're adding more and more to them and other states are looking at wacky laws too they can because they believe that they know what's best for you know you three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter you can tweet at me 
people are texting in about Bezos and and Trump and look, it's an odd story. It's a weird story. It shows you that in situations how humans are with sex and the whole nine yards, and and it also shows you that it, look, it's. You, you sit back and you look at it and you think to yourself, you, you know, you got a guy that's just like, OK, I'm not that embarrassed. I'm, and, uh, and and if you want to let it get out there, get out there. I got billions upon billions upon billions of dollars and I don't care. And uh, I look all right. And, uh, and apparently uh, I'm a little bit blessed, if you will, down there. So uh, go ahead. Go ahead. And it's just a it's and it's getting weirder and weirder. And I, I, I suspect sometime in the coming few days, there'll be even more to this story of weirdness. And he has hired a fleet of people to try to figure out and break the case open of who got this stuff. How did they get it? Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. Put an interesting story on Twitter. Uh, we're going to get the hopefully get the uh, person who wrote it in on Monday, but it's about abolishing billionaires and how we should do that, not just here in America, but everywhere. It's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. There was a Washington Post investigation going on, and the inquirer, the, the letter says, you write the following in the Washington Post, or the implicit threat is we publish these photographs. Getting to the Washington Post, what they should say. Which Bezos says would have been false anyway, because he feels apparently that there was political motivation for what uh, the, what the Inquirer was doing. Your question is, is it blackmail? Is it a crime? Is it extortion? My answer is, I don't know. I, I think it is worthy of investigation. It's a- is it or isn't it? I mean, you got his willy pictures, right? You got nine of them, apparently, like it was doing a photo shoot. I wonder if they used any filters. <laughs> Puppy dog, sad eyes, goofy eyes. <laughs> oh, jeez, Chad. Right? But here's the thing. Does it rise to blackmail? It was an exchange of money. It was like they, they, their whole thought is, hey, you were going to, you, 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 you were saying stuff about us and you need to retract that. And blah, I, it, it's. You would think it feels like blackmail. Like, and if this was an ex girlfriend or boyfriend, depending on the state, I think they have the revenge porn laws kind of thing. If you're going to post something or do something like this, this is totally different. And the the question is, look, it may be sleazy and disgusting. That's the way that they uh, they operate. The old Mister uh, Mister David Pecker over there at the uh, at the Enquirer, right? That's the way that they've operated for years. And it's the is it or isn't it situation? Blackmail is a crime, but free speech issues sometimes muddy the waters. In response to Bezos' allegations, look for the Inquirer to say they have a right to report impropriety by the world's most powerful businessman and a free speech right to publish or not as they wish. Yeah. So I, you know what? It is a it's a tough thing. And this is going to be the battle here. And it's ugly. And you know those pictures are coming out. Let's not pretend that those pictures aren't coming out. Let's not for a second think that we're not going to see those pictures. But is it? he is, uh, Bezos is pissed. And unlike a lot of other people that may have tried to placate them or whatever it is, and we don't even know how many of these things have gone on in the past from all kinds of situations. Put yourself in that situation. He is not ashamed, apparently, Uh, not embarrassed because that's already happened. And that was more about uh, hurting his wife, I think, than anything else. Uh, uh, He is worth hundreds of millions and billions and billions. Figure what it's going to be. I say probably about 70 billion after all is said and done because his wife's going to take a chunk of it. But still, you know, arguably the top one or two people in the world as far as wealth goes. 
And unlike a lot of other people, he ain't going anywhere. He isn't. Blackmail is demanding something in return for not revealing compromising information. Extortion is obtaining something through threats. Bezos claims that's exactly what the Inquirer is doing by threatening to publish private material, unless the Amazon tycoon says that the tabloid is reporting the story based on non-political motives. And it, it's uh, that's a tough thing to prove. It is. It's a very tough thing to prove. But I do know one thing out of all of this. Uh, if you want to, at some point in time, there's no way that this isn't getting out. And I, I was talking last night a bit about this when this story first started to break. That you know we already knew all these things had come out, right? And but we didn't know until last night what was going on and what he published and he, he did his blog. That when, like, athletes and stars don't want to give up their phones, don't want to, like, everybody like Tom Brady, oh, my God, he destroyed his phone. That's why he should be. Why would you destroy your phone if you weren't guilty? Simple. Because what do you think is going to happen? Like, Tom Brady has maybe intimate stuff on there with his wife, which is totally fine, right? They're adults. They're not hurting anybody. Totally fine. And the NFL, he hands over his phone to the NFL and they hold it for a couple days or whatever it is that they do. What do you think happens when somebody's making 15 bucks an hour, has a chance to take something like that, hand it over some of those pictures to say, I don't know, the inquirer or somebody who's willing to pay for it? I get why nobody wants to. No, it's none your business. It isn't. And the question is how? Because originally, remember how these pictures came to be? Everybody said she had sent them on to a friend. And her friend supposedly did it. But now they're saying, no, that did not happen. So how did they arrive in the hands of the people at the Inquirer? One wild card is, how did the Inquirer get the private pictures and texts? If they committed any crimes or invaded anybody's privacy, that undermines their right to publish, and it strengthens the claim by Bezos that this is textbook blackmail or extortion. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. How did they do? How did that happen? Now, somebody may have committed the crime and then handed them over to them. Right. They may have done that, but those things are so hard to prove in this day and age. They are so hard to prove. But he is hiring the best of the best, he said. He's doing everything he possibly can to try to crack this open and how they got there. We'll see how that goes. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. You know, we are one week away from what potentially could be part due when it comes to a shutdown. And I don't know what, I I honestly don't know what's going to happen at this point in time. I don't, because what I'm hearing is that maybe they're moving the ball far enough that they could do another CR and try to get this done sooner rather than later. And... I'm also hearing it could be done as early as Sunday and that Trump has been flexible enough to have listened to people uh, that say, hey, you know what? You don't need a full wall, but you do need certain barriers. The problem is, and, and this is, you know, it's another one of those things when it comes to this immigration side of stuff is that you think, OK, well, well, that that could be good. Right. That sounds like something that could be good, except for. And this is, again, another one of those things where there's the games being played. Except for the fact that they want to allocate money, then they want to restrict how any of that money can be used when it comes to a wall or a barrier. Saying, essentially, here is your wall money. There it is. Okay, here's the deal. You can't use it, though. Huh? So you can have the wall money, you just can't use the wall money. And except in certain situations. And they're going to make it ridiculous. Is that a win? No, it's frustrating. 
It is very frustrating. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show Show Twitter. The, can we just now admit that it is? I don't know who's going to be the governor of Virginia on Monday or Tuesday. Governor says he's not going away. Everybody says you should resign. The lieutenant governor has issues that doubled today. I think that the letter written by the woman um, reads as as a credible account, and I think there should be an investigation to get to the bottom of it and determine the facts. So that was from the first letter. That's Kamala Harris. Found out today that there's another person that has come out and said, hey, yeah, in, when we were at Duke together, stuff happened. So I think the the lieutenant governor, who thought he potentially could be governor, may not even be lieutenant governor. The governor, who has gone MIA, by the way, just completely has, has not, you, he can't even be found at all. I don't know what that deal's about, but he says he's not going anywhere, but he's also not talking to anybody, and he's hiring PR firms. It's it's bizarre. And then, of course, you've got the AG of the state, <laughs> who is also in trouble for his blackface after demanding that the governor steps down. But his was different because he went as Curtis Blow and was paying homage and I don't think any of them are racist. If that's all they've done, like that's that's we could play this game all day. So next in line, if all of them were to go away, would be a Republican who got the position he's in because of a coin flip. <laughs> it is a mess. It is a giant mess. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. Also today, the fun that is Whitaker on display being grilled. So he's the acting AG, took over for Sessions. He's not a huge fan of the Mueller investigation. He has been getting it in with and on with several people there. And remember, these things are show sherific. That's what they are. You go, you sit there. It's about it's not about you. It's about them getting their 15 minutes of time. Why did President Trump choose to replace Attorney General Sessions with an outspoken critic of the special counsel instead of with any number of qualified individuals who had already received Senate confirmation? Nadler, who's been a huge outspoken uh, uh, opponent of Trump and continues to do so, just grilled him and grilled him and grilled him over and over and over today to the point where at one time... (laughs) Because you remember, you get five minutes, right? You get five minutes, right? You get five minutes with it. So you can ask questions for five minutes. You don't get an hour. You get five minutes. And at one time, Whitaker says, I think your five minutes is up. But they were coming hard. Sheila Jackson Lee. Mr. Attorney General, we're not joking here. And your humor is not acceptable. Now, you are here because we have a constitutional duty to ask questions, and the Congress has the right to establish government rules. Oh, there you go. And this has nothing to do with whether or not he's qualified for the job. It has nothing to do with it. It has all to do with the fact that this is the Mueller investigation. I can guarantee you, if he was up for this gig at this moment in time, and there was no Mueller investigation, there was nothing swirling around of any of this, that he would probably make it through. He'd get a little fight, obviously. But this has all to do with Mueller. And they asked him on numerous occasions, hey, you talk to the president, what do you guys talk about? I will answer the committee's questions as best I can. But I will continue the long-standing executive branch practice of not disclosing information that may be subject to executive privilege, such as the contents of conversations with the president. But, Matt, what about the contents of your heart? I just would like to know that. <laughs> it was just a show. That's all it was. It was just a show. It was just this is where our tax dollars are going, kids. It, the, the, you, you think they could get stuff done in a quicker, faster. And I want a clock up there, right? I think we should have a clock up there. I think, that, I think you should cut the time from five minutes to everybody gets two questions. 
You get one question, then you get a second follow-up question, and then we move on. There's no grandstanding or statements. And the minute you go longer than 30 or 40 seconds or a minute asking your question, you're done. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Six days away from what? Valentine's Day. 1-800-Flowers.com has your back. I know. Shoo! You are lucky. You are lucky. They're saving your butt. Because I know some of you, because you're probably like me, a little forgetful, doing other things. How about this? 18 red roses, twenty nine ninety nine, or upgraded 24 roses, which you're going to do for an extra $10 more. So... Twenty nine ninety nine for eighteen or upgrade, which you're going to do for twenty four red roses for a total of thirty nine ninety nine. That's a winner winner with a chicken dinner. What are you waiting for? Do it now. They're my rose authority. They should be yours as well. So you get eighteen red roses. You're looking at twenty nine ninety nine. That's amazing, Chad. Eighteen just incredible red roses. But wait a minute, I can upgrade for ten dollars more to twenty four. Yeah, well, I'm going to do that. Order early next week. You're going to be paying a premium. Do it now. Please do it now. Save yourself. Win at Valentine's Day. 1-800-Flowers.com is your rose authority. They're mine. To order 18 red roses for twenty nine ninety nine, or better yet, upgrade to 24 red roses for only $10 more. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Click on the radio icon. Enter code Benson. Remember, their freshness is insured. They're shipped overnight and picked at their peak. Don't be a fool. Win at Valentine's Day. 1-800-Flowers.com. Code Benson. 1-800-Flowers.com. Code Benson. But hurry. Offer ends today. It's the Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Eleven medical specialists spent four hours examining the president, after which White House physician Sean Connolly declared Mr. Trump is in very good health and anticipates he'll remain that way for the rest of his presidency and beyond. The president received a similar glowing medical report from his previous physician last year, Mr. Trump's press secretary saying that the president has not religiously followed doctors' diet and exercise recommendations. (laughs) He likes junk food. Oh, man, he likes himself some junk food. Hey, you got to think about it, though, for just a second. What is he, like 70, right? Late 60s, early 70s. Uh, I mean, he is he's 72. Pretty, pretty decent for 72, though. Motoring around. Motoring around, doing stuff. Not bad for 72. I think if we all get that point at 72, we're motoring around like that. Got a little smile on our face. Do an eye. 323 538 2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. Again, a lot of this stuff today, when I was listening to this Whitaker stuff, and, and I tell you, it is, again, listen to this. And this is uh, Pramila Japal, a Democrat from Washington. Uh, these aren't questions, these are. Here's my performance. These parents were in your custody. Your attorneys are prosecuting them, and your department was not tracking parents who were separated from their children. Do you know what kind of damage has been done to children and families across this country? Children who will never get to see their parents again. (sighs) That's, you're making, you're making statements. Which is fine. The whole point is, aren't you supposed to be getting to something? Right? But it's about getting your soundbite. So you can get it on Twitter and play it over and over again. And over and over again. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. There's a Green New Deal. It's expensive. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. That is Cardi B 
J Balvin and Bad Bunny nominated for a Grammy. Kids, I like it. Is that English? <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. It's a little bit English. Not a lot of English. I do not believe that is English, Phil. But I could be wrong. Somebody may go, huh? That is, yeah, that was, uh, I had no idea what any, I heard the, I like it. I like, okay, I recognize that, but I only recognize that because of the melody. And I know that there's a, you know, I like it like that, but uh, there it is. Cardi B, Bad Bunny, J Balvin. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's probably J Balvin. Bad Bunny. I like Bad Bunny. Do you? No, I have no idea. (laughs) Sounds like a great punk band, but I'm sure it's somebody who wears a giant bunny outfit and spins records. 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. God, I sounded bitter there. <laughs> well, back in my day, the actual DJ had to spin two records, not just put something on in some sort of ipod machine. Oh, my goodness me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. I, I text producer Phil last night because I was watching, uh, God, what's it called, Phil? Keep on keeping on? Or what's, uh, what is it? Pop star Keep never on. stop, never stopping? That's right. Yeah, yeah, with Adam Sandberg. And it is when you listen to this, some of this stuff and do you listen to a lot of these things? It is a parody mockumentary that is so hilarious and so like probably spot on. I, I just I, I loved it. I loved it. It made me laugh. And this morning, so I go to the gym to work out and sure enough. <laughs> It's on in the gym on my little uh, on my treadmill. So I watched parts of it and it was just part where his turtle dies. <laughs> it's just so stupid. Oh, my God. It is. It is. But it, the raps that he does in it, I'm like, he does them so well that you're like, hey, it could be music. It could be three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter you can tweet at us. Love hearing from you, AOC, and the the, the new Green Deal that is being rolled out. Uh, it is. It, it's just again. It all sounds wonderful, right? Like everybody's getting a unicorn. It's a utopia. Everybody's getting a job guarantee. They're getting a house guarantee. They're getting health care guarantee. The world is going to be run on renewable energy and like unicorn farts. It's all going to be fantastic, and it, it, we're going to get rid of like cow flatulence and we're going to do all of this wackiness and it just sounds so great it's all about social justice and all of this stuff but somebody's got to pay for it and chuck todd here's the one thing i'll say is she she's got her uh, you know she's got her posse she's got her internet posse or twitter posse and you better watch out because they will come for you i found that out today when i tweeted something out i've got a few not so nice messages from people because how dare you challenge her? Because she was a barista 18 months ago, so she knows exactly what she's talking about. Chad, that's not very nice. But they do ask her questions because even though they may, like, look, you know, climate change, we can we can discuss a lot of the stuff on the surface of it. There are some things in there I agree with, right? We need to take better care. Far too long. Business has got away with doing stuff. But, 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 but just as I say that, I read a great article in the Huffington Post today that the people on the climate panel that are Democrats have received almost a quarter of a million dollars from fossil fuel companies, for God's sakes. There's that crony capitalism that comes in, right? And here's the beauty of all, a lot of this stuff. Because people are socially active on the interwebs, companies have checked themselves more than they ever have before. And that's some of that market working right there. But Chuck Todd asked her some real questions. The president spent a lot of time on the using the S word, Mm, socialism and socialist. Um, Oh, I was flattered. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. You are a democratic socialist. Mm -hmm. Can you be a democratic socialist and a capitalist? I think it's possible. I think. Do you say to yourself, "I'm I'm a capitalist," but? I don't say that. Okay. You know, if anything, I would say I'm. I believe in in a democratic economy, but but. The butt is there. Okay. So, The butt is there. Nice little butt, too, right there. She looks pretty. Let's be real. I'll say it again, and I'll say it over and over again. If she's three bills, we're not having any of this conversation. Can we all agree on that? Can we? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. 
What does the um, private sector do better than you know that the private sector, look, government should stay out of X because yeah. the private sector does that better. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. There's a lot of consumer goods mm -hmm. where the private sector works. And just because you're in the private sector doesn't, you can be in the private sector and be a democratically socialist business. Worker cooperatives are a perfect example of that. Um, it's not about government takeover. It's about how much do workers have a say in your business. Well, I, I don't know. How much do they have a say? Right? Remember, all the stuff that she's she's getting all of this plottings from the people. There's some people out there that are afraid. There are Democrats out there that go along because they understand they don't have. And, and if you look at, like, perfect example, as you look at some of these people that are getting behind her, they're getting behind her because the, the, the retribution that they may get if they don't follow her not only follow a lot of what she has to say, but actually follow her on the Instagram and the Twitter and all of these kind of things, they they are, because they're coming. They're coming hard for you if you don't. So you got to get in line, even though off the record, you're like, this is insane, right? This, this stuff's crazy. You look at her Twitter following and you look at a lot of these other things, you're like, wow, her Instagram, her gram, and that gram rolling. But she's got her posse. But what do they do? How much of a how much say do they have? Right? How much say should a should a worker have? I don't know. I want input from from person that works for me. Absolutely, I do. But in the end, it's my butt. It's my business. It's my dollars. It's my risk. And because of that, you're getting a job. You're getting paid. I want to hear what you have to say. But at the end of the day, you walk away if everything goes to hell in a handbasket. I don't. If it falls apart, it's my money lost, not yours. But there, it's not just her. It's a perfect example uh, of this. If you didn't hear this yesterday... Uh, because they're rolling out. They want to get this, you know, the fight for 15, the living wage, all of these kind of things. And it's and the, the class warfare is going on here. And it's easy to demonize successful people of all of these. They've got all of these things. You don't have any of these things. And the only reason anybody has any of these things. The only reason at all that anybody has any of these things is because. They've stepped on other people's backs and stolen all their hard work, and that's it. Right? That's it. So in Han Omar, who is uh, one of the new uh, uh, Congress people, right, was questioning a McDonald's worker as their this push is is on now, and it's all about let's demonize the top. So the CEO of McDonald's pay, gets paid $21.8 million. Uh, can, can you share with us what uh, someone in your position at McDonald's gets paid annually? Not that much. <laughs> Not even a, a fraction of that. But I, I make uh, $11 an hour at my job currently. $11 an hour. That's what he makes, right? He gets paid some 21 million dollars yeah that's what he did make last year now salary was 1.5 million dollars that's what the salary was right that's what the salary the salary was 1.5 million the bonuses the stock options all of this stuff added up to that so just on it he made 21.5 million dollars but it's again this is a moral thing so the the median uh pay for a mcdonald's worker um was seven thousand dollars in 2017 and that is the the pay gap between uh the ceo that's making 21.8 uh to the um seven thousand that uh a worker who has put in 40 hours uh, a day gets paid. Well, it's not 40 hours um, a day. And to we me, that. that just morally does not sit well. Yeah. 
Morally, it doesn't sit well with you. Again, this is all about control. It's the justice that they're bringing in. They're doing all these things. It's about demonizing the top, but also realizing as you demonize that top, you need what the top has because you got to take some of that to redistribute it. Everybody always screams, you know, Reaganomics didn't work. Trickle-down economics doesn't work. But it seems to work for the government, right? That's what you guys want to do. You essentially want to go out and tax as much as you can to trickle it down to the people you think deserve it the most. You're promising people the world. And you do it through class warfare. They're evil, they're bad. We need more of what they got. The screaming of the 70% taxes over X amount of dollars. Th- this kind of stuff right here, you sit back and you just shake your head. But it's coming. Portions of the Green New Deal disaster, whatever you want to call it, some of that stuff is coming because guess what? There is more that don't have, that are frustrated, that felt like they've been sold a bill of goods and they've been indoctrinated in colleges from the last umpteen years that are going to get out there and they're going to look around and say, I want that. Go get that and give me some of that. That's what I want. And I don't think people understand. It may not be all because it's impossible to do all. But to do enough to radically change who we are, oh, you bet you candy ass there's enough for them to do that. You bet. And when you're telling everybody that you get free ice creams, free unicorns, free health care, free everything, and all we have to do is just make sure that those bad, evil people pay all of their fair share, and we're going to let you guys decide what that fair share may be. That's scary. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us. It's the Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! Delta Airlines and Coca-Cola are apologizing for distributing controversial napkins to plane passengers. Let's take a look at them. Here's what the napkin says. Because you're on a plane full of interesting people, and hey, you never know. Then you flip over the napkin, and there's a spot for somebody to write a name and a phone number on it. And taking it one step further, there is small print that reads, be a little old school, write down your number, and give it to your plane crush. You never know. Passengers got the message loud and clear, and they were not exactly thrilled about it. Why not? When did we become this nation of uptight ninnies that are terrified of anything? I'm just curious about that, because why in God's name would that be awful? Because I prefer to be on the Internet as a menu item. I don't want to actually talk to anybody. It's people freaked out about this. One tweet we saw says, hey, Delta and Coke, these napkins are creepy. Not a good look. Mike writes creepy, especially after reading the smaller print. Swing and a miss. Some people were into it, though. Dale here saying, get over yourself. These are fantastic. Thank goodness someone is trying to bring fun and joy to flying. I just. I sit here and I laugh and I think to myself, "Okay, wait a minute here. They didn't say join the Mile High Club, right? They didn't say that, right? They didn't say stalk the person you give this to or whatever. It's a joke. It's supposed to be an icebreaker. A millennial wouldn't even know what to do if you approached them and asked them, hey, uh, you're, uh, would you like to go out? Would you like to hang out? Would you like to, what, wait, what, why are you talking to me? What is this? What, what, huh? what, 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 remember the old days when you'd like, okay, man, there she is. Go say something to her. Hey, hey, there he is. Go do, no, not anymore. And this is, a, it's a napkin. Delta and Coke issued similar statements. They apologizing for the napkins, saying that they'd already started to try and remove them from all the flights before the social media outcry. And there's a saying, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. A lot of the conversation online basically said, all right, maybe you don't need to be hitting on people on the plane, 
but everybody does bury their head in their phone. Maybe we could talk to each other a little bit sure. more. I, don't, I wasn't so offended. offended. I'm not that yeah. offended, not offended by that. All, I mean, yeah. at least they were trying to have a little fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's just what a laugh. Uh, you can't do that anymore, damn it. What are you guys thinking? How dare you do that? How dare you? How dare you? This is just so stupid. It's just the way that... And, and, and it isn't going to be until more and more companies and people stand up and say, yeah, no, you guys can get over yourself. Stop being so oversensitive. It isn't until that starts to happen because then the minute you do something like this, they know they've got you now. And the next time they don't like something or something looks amiss or out of, out of whack or they, somebody takes it a different way, they know that you will jump. That's it. All you're going to say is how high? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. The lieutenant governor, who thought he was going to be governor as early as this past Monday, they're now drafting up impeachment paperwork. Mr. Fairfax, again, who in Virginia, uh, allegations came out that he sexually assaulted somebody at the Democratic National Convention, and now a second woman has come forward. And uh, with all of the craziness swirling around the governor, who says he's not going anywhere because of his blackface in the yearbook picture, who says it's not him, but it is him, but then he apologized, not quite sure, and now he's kind of disappeared. And, of course, then you got the AG. Now they are drawing up uh, paperwork to have the lieutenant governor Removed from office. So, man, that is just, an, again, it's it's wacky. I don't even know what to say at this point in time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Hey, sleeping is vitally important. I can't wait to get home. My my pillow. I've got the mattress topper. I've got a my pillow. I'll be out like a light later on. Tonight. It's going to be great. Last night I slept pretty darn good. Did a lot of stuff. Had a late night business meeting. I was skeptical with my pillow. They said try it. I said fine. I don't. If somebody, if somebody asked me, I was like, "Do you take everybody who comes to you and approaches you?" And I said, "No, I don't." Actually, there's lots of things I turn down, which really angers the salespeople. But <clears throat> because it's my name on it, and I trust my pillow, I do. Put it to the test. Right now, you got nothing to lose. They got a money back guarantee till March first. You can get four pillows, two premium pillows, two go anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping. It's 100% machine washable and dryable. When you get it, just put it in the dryer, fluff it up for about 30 minutes. You've got a 10 year warranty. It's made in the USA. It is incredible. And again, money back guarantee to March 1st. Four pillows, two premium pillows, two go anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping. Get it now. Call 800 944 4975. You're not going to find this deal anywhere else. Or go to mypillow.com. When you do use the promo code Benson, that's 800 944 4975. Or mypillow.com. Mypillow.com. Promo code Benson. At Chad Benson Show. Twitter, C H A D B E N S O N. Follow along with us as well on the old Instagram, at Chad Benson. I just posted a picture of Jack on there in his Boy Scout outfit. He looks half Boy Scout, half NHL hockey player, missing his front teeth. Ah, oh, to be young. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. And I am so incredibly excited that we are going to transition this country into the future and we are not going to be dragged behind by our past. Today is not just a, a big day for us as a party, us as a movement, but this is a big day for activists all over the country. Today is a big day for people who have been left behind. Climate change and our environmental challenges are one of the biggest existential threats to our way of life. The Green New Disaster. The Green Dream. Very green, very expensive, has a bit to do with climate. Vague on the details of how to pay for it. It's a great article in Reason 
uh, dot com talking about the fact that they had gone through something where they broke down what it would cost to put us in a situation where we got off fossil fuels just when it comes to our homes and and things of that nature. And they put it about at 2030, and this they did this in 2015. They said it was, and this was Stanford University, uh, Professor Jacobs up there, uh, said it would be about $7 trillion. Other people have come out and say $13 trillion. Let's split the difference and say right around $10 trillion just to run the grid. Think about that for a second. With hundreds of thousands of wind turbines, both offshore and on land, you, you, insane, insane. But this has nothing to do with climate change and all to do with how they perceive how unfair the world is and how they can move things in a direction where government takes more control and they make everything fairer, and if they have to use the climate as the catalyst to kick everything off to their social justice, making the world a better place based on the way that it should be, which sounds more like uh, Chairman Mao and his great leap forward than anything else, be prepared. Small, incremental policy solutions are not enough. There is no justice and there is no combating climate change without addressing what has happened to indigenous communities. That means that there is no fixing our economy without addressing the racial wealth gap. That means that we are not going to transition to renewable energies without also transitioning frontline communities and coal communities into economic opportunity as well. (sighs) The wealth gap what it is it's the wealth gap let's get this thing done oh, look and it, are there really wealthy people out there yeah tons of wealthy people out there right you look at what's out there there's a lot of people got a lot of money and a lot of people don't have any money but this right here is just going to break the bank the amount of money it would cost to even try to implement a portion of this could radically destroy our economy. It is, ne- and, and it's funny when people say you can't talk about Venezuela and compare the the hopes and dreams of what AOC and the Bernie Sanders a- and the people of the world here who talk about the fact that they're democratic socialists or whatever they're supposed to be. You can't talk about that's not fair. No, it's absolutely fair. It is 110% fair. Some of the stuff in this is insane. It really is. I mean, we could take the most, and, 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 I, and I, don't want to, I don't want to take the most absurd. I tweeted out today. Those are who, you know, like one of the things about that's in it is people who are unable to work will get a bunch of money, right? That you're going to get a salary of some sort, but also people who are unwilling to work. But let's just take out the the crazy stuff, right? And we'll just go with the we'll, we'll meet in the middle some of this stuff. Is nuts. The thought of trying to do bullet trains everywhere? Right? The thought of that is is California can't even build a damn bullet train between Bakersfield and Chowchilla. What was supposed to cost $10 billion is now closing in on $100 billion, and there's not even a train. And when and if it ever gets done at the price of God knows what, who is going to get on it? Nobody. But you don't need to implement it all to see where this is headed. You don't need that. No, 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 no. You only need 15, 20, 25% of this to be implemented to shift our nation and to make it something that, quite frankly, is, uh, I, I, again, I don't know 
which 15, 20, or 25 percent, but you've got a lot of young people who are going to be big, the biggest part of the voting block that look at her and are behind her. They're influencers. And she's the biggest of influencers. And they're going, ah, yeah, you know what? This stuff sounds great, right? Like everybody gets a unicorn. Everybody gets a rainbow. Everybody gets all of this great stuff. It's going to be awesome. And it's because, it, and, and you tug at the heartstrings. It's about the justice of it all. It's about the justice of all. This is the justice right here. No. What it will do to us if they were to implement even a quarter of this stuff. Because it's not about anything more than the justice and control that they want. They want, they want government to be your God. That's the dream. And they could say it's not, oh, don't, no, we're going to do, we're going to be just like Norway. We're going to be just like all of the Scandinavian countries, which you're not. This monolithic society that's over there that's much smaller, where everybody, it, it, it's not even, well, you know, everybody's kind of, everybody's equal across the board in a lot of things there. Most everybody's can read and write at college levels, like 99% of them. They're all competent in stuff. They're all capitalists. They just understand that in the world that they live in and their their world that is much smaller than ours, that they're all kind of rowing in the same direction, right? But now that they've seen immigration start to grow and a lot of other things, things are starting to get a little bit wonky. But they're a capitalist society that understands, hey, we pay a lot of high taxes for our social safety nets. But we're looking around now and we're seeing a lot of people come here who aren't pulling their weight. Who are enjoying the fruits of our labor and we're not fans of that. And if you go back and you look at a lot of these Scandinavian countries when they really went hardcore socialists, because they're not, they're capitalist free market societies with high taxes. And they'll tell you that we're not socialist nations. Stop calling us that. But when you go and you look when they did try to do some of this stuff in the 70s. It went to hell in a handbasket, and they're like, we got to roll this thing back. This is getting ugly. They're using things to tug at heartstrings, to talk about social justice. And some of this stuff is coming, and they radically want to remake what we are as a country. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Matthew Whitaker getting grilled on the hill. He's the acting AG. They're coming hard for him because they want him to understand that they're coming for the president, right? And we know that they got rid of Sessions, and the reason they got rid of Sessions is because they brought you in, and you've been critical of the Mueller report. We want to know what you and the president are feeling and talking about there, Matt. I will answer the committee's questions as best I can, but I will continue the long-standing executive branch practice of not disclosing information that may be subject to executive privilege, such as the contents of conversations with the president. Not good enough. We want to know what he's saying. We want to know what he's talking about. We don't want to wait for leaks. We want to know. You need to tell us, Matt. I was telling producer Phil, he kind of looks like he's a bad guy. Like if you were if you were to build a, a, like a, a a bad movie character that was maybe a white supremacist, it would be him. Or 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 put him in an all white suit and make him this bad guy that was fighting against you know like Captain you know America or something like that. That's kind of what he looks like. Matt. Oh, my Lord. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Jeff Bezos. It is uh, interesting. He's coming hard for the Inquirer, right? Wants to know, hey, how'd you guys get those things? You know, first it was supposed to be she sent him to her friend. 
and then her friend somehow potentially took them, but now they're saying that's not how it happened. How did they get I don't know how they get a lot of their stuff, right? They don't tell their sources, but you know they pay for stuff. He's saying, you trying to blackmail me, right, to get me to change some stuff in the post, talking about the fact that you got wiener pictures and you got her nether region pictures and you got all of these things. And, yeah, you're trying to do that, huh? That's what you're trying to do. Well, guess what? Here's some apples. I'm worth a gazillion, cabillion, quadrillion dollars. Go ahead. This is This is it right here. And they're saying, well, it's not really blackmail. You know, people are saying, hey, it was uh, right at first refusal. Hey, I got these pictures. Are you interested in them? How'd you get them? Not going to say how we got them. But if you could do this, is it blackmail? Is it not blackmail? It's going to be very interesting. But there's no doubt those pictures are going to end up on the web. No doubt they are. And this is why when, when stars don't want to turn their cameras over to police, or anybody for that matter, but particular stars don't want to do that. And when people got mad at, oh, Tom Brady must have cheated. He broke his, you know why? Because if I turn my phone over, right, and you're a star, and what do you think happens? Magically, stuff gets leaked that has nothing to do with anything else because somebody knows I can leak this to the Inquirer or where the Guardian or the New York Post, and they're going to pay me X amount of dollars. And I'm making 15 bucks an hour? That's why. I see why. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Don't blink. Let them do the blinking for you. Who's that? I'm talking about blink. Home security. They're amazing. They won't blink. You can blink. They won't. They're going to watch your house on the inside and outside. Right, Their technology is amazing, so easy to set up, wire-free, sets up in minutes, two AA batteries, Right, lasts up to two years. They've got this live feed option that I absolutely love, and I can check on my critters, see what's going on inside the house, especially Big Winston, because he gets up to no good. I'm not going to lie to you sometimes. He's a little mischievous. But then they've got those motion-activated cameras outside, and what those do is they protect your home. Maybe you've got a package delivery. You can see what happens. Somebody may want to steal your package. Boom. Smile, they're taking a picture of you. Or how about you relaxing at home at night with your family, watching a little TV. Next thing you know, what happens? Uh Uh-oh, something happens. You get an alert on your phone. You see what's going on outside. Boom. You take care of it. You handle it. That's what Blink will do for you. Absolutely incredible. they got the Blink smartphone app. Works with Alexa. No contracts, no subscriptions. Totally affordable. So get your Blink camera system right now. They make incredible gifts. And again, a great way to monitor your package deliveries. So much of us, so many of us do. In fact, I've gotten to the point now where I've had stuff taken with with the Porch Pirates that I don't even, I have everything delivered at work before I got this because it was just so much easier because I'm kind of in a desolated area out there and I get, and, and I get worried. Yeah, because stuff disappears. I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. That's why I've got Blink Protect. It's incredible. So go to BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. You're going to absolutely love what they can do for you. Again, easy to set up. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. Blink is an Amazon company. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio, medium rare, and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. That is Brandy Carlisle. Never heard of her. <laughs> Am I just... God, I feel like I'm so old. Brandy Carl. Is she America's version to Adele? Is that what she is? She's a singer-songwriter. So that right there is nominated. It's called The Joke. The Joke. Joke's on you. She's 37, by the way, from Ravensdale, Washington, USA, America. So enjoy that, kids. But uh, she's up for a Grammy this weekend. I am not up for a Grammy. 
But uh, she is up for said Grammy, so we'll see how that goes. With the whole Bezos thing, you know, the question is, because they approached him essentially and said, hey, we got these pictures of your uh, ding-dong and of your girlfriend who's not your wife's hoo-ha, and we're we're interested in maybe you doing something for us, and we should probably discuss these kind of things. And the question is, is, is it blackmail or is it not blackmail? Blackmail is a crime, but free speech issues sometimes muddy the waters. In response to Bezos' allegations, look for the Inquirer to say they have a right to report impropriety by the world's most powerful businessman and a free speech right to publish or not as they wish. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see how this goes, but it's definitely not done anytime soon. And he's got the money, and he's got the want to take it on, and he's already felt he's felt the embarrassment. Plus, I think he thinks, you know what, I'm a good-looking dude. Uh, uh, Rumor has it uh, by some of those text messages that kind of got out is maybe he's blessed, if you will. So uh, I don't think he's really too worried about it, and it'll be interesting uh, I think he also feels like, you know, the embarrassment is over now because everybody's already kind of knows what's happened. And this isn't the first time this has happened to people. So we'll just take this thing head on. Right. And maybe the world will see the hundred million dollar ding dong, billion dollar ding dong. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. I can't wait for our first president who is in a sexting scandal. Because by then it'll be like, eh, you know, AOC sexed it. Come on now. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. That is Cardi B, J Balvin, and Bad Bunny nominated for a Grammy. Kids, I like it. Is that English? <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. It's a little bit English. Not a lot of English. I do not believe that is English, Phil. But I could be wrong. Somebody may go, huh? That is. Yeah. That was. Uh, I had no idea what any. I heard that. I like it. I like. Okay. I recognize that. But I only recognize that because of the melody. And I know that there's a. You know. I like it like that. But uh, there it is. Cardi B. Bad Bunny. J Balvin. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's probably J Balvin. Bad Bunny. I like Bad Bunny. Do you? No, I have no idea. Sounds like a great punk band, but I'm sure it's somebody who wears a giant bunny outfit and spins records. 323-538-2423. God, I sounded bitter there. (laughs) Back in my day. The actual DJ had to spin two records, not just put something on in some sort of iPod machine. Oh, my goodness me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. I, I texted producer Phil last night because I was watching, uh, God, what's it called, Phil? Keep on, keeping on, or what's, uh, what is it? Pop star, Keep never on. stop, never stopping. That's right. Yeah, yeah, with Adam Sandberg. And it is... When you listen to this, some of this stuff and do you listen to a lot of these things, it is a parody mockumentary that is so hilarious and so like probably spot on. I, I just I, I loved it. I loved it. It made me laugh. And this morning, so I go to the gym to work out, and sure enough, <laughs> it's on in the gym on my little uh on my treadmill. So I watched parts of it and it was just part where his turtle dies. <laughs> so stupid oh my god it is it is but the raps that he does in it i'm like he does them so well that you're like it could be music it could be three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter you can tweet at us love hearing from you aoc and the, the the new green deal that is being rolled out uh it is 
it, it's just again, it all sounds wonderful, right? Like everybody's getting a unicorn. It's a utopia. Everybody's getting a job guarantee. They're getting a house guarantee. They're getting health care guarantee. The world is going to be run on renewable energy and like unicorn farts. It's all going to be fantastic. And it, we're going to get rid of like cow flatulence and we're going to do all of this wackiness and it just sounds so great it's all about social justice and all of this stuff but somebody's got to pay for it and chuck todd here's the one thing i'll say is she she's got her uh, you know she's got her posse she's got her internet posse or twitter posse and you better watch out because they will come for you i found that out today when i tweeted something out i've got a few not so nice messages from people because how dare you challenge her? Because she was a barista 18 months ago, so she knows exactly what she's talking about. Chad, that's not very nice. But they do ask her questions because even though they may, like, look, you know, climate change, we can we can discuss a lot of the stuff on the surface of it. There are some things in there I agree with, right? We need to take better care. Far too long. Business has got away with doing stuff. But, 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 but just as I say that, I read a great article in the Huffington Post today that the people on the climate panel that are Democrats have received almost a quarter of a million dollars from fossil fuel companies, for God's sakes. There's that crony capitalism that comes in, right? And here's the beauty of all, a lot of this stuff. Because people are socially active on the interwebs, companies have checked themselves more than they ever have before. And that's some of that market working right there. But Chuck Todd asked her some real questions. The president spent a lot of time on the using the S word, mm, oh, socialism yeah. and socialist. Um, oh, S. I was flattered. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You are a democratic socialist. Mm-hmm. Can you be a democratic socialist and a capitalist? I think it's possible. I think. Do you that- say to yourself, "I'm I'm a capitalist," but? I don't say that. Okay. You know, if anything, I would say I'm. I believe in in a democratic economy, but but the but is there. Okay. So the but is there. Nice little butt too, right there. She looks pretty. Let's be real. I'll say it again, and I'll say it over and over again. If she's three bills, we're not having any of this conversation. Can we all agree on that? Can we? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. What does the um, private sector do better than you know that the private sector, look, government should stay out of X because yeah. the private sector does that better. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. There's a lot of consumer goods mm-hmm. where the private sector works. And just because you're in the private sector doesn't, you can be in the private sector and be a democratically socialist business. Worker cooperatives are a perfect example of that. Um, it's not about government takeover. It's about how much do workers have a say in your business? Well, I, I don't know. How much do they have a say? Right? Remember, all the stuff that she's she's getting all of this plottings from the people. There's some people out there that are afraid. There are Democrats out there that go along because they understand they don't have. And, and if you look at, like, perfect example, as you look at some of these people that are getting behind her, they're getting behind her because the, the, the retribution that they may get if they don't follow her not only follow a lot of what she has to say, but actually follow her on the Instagram and the Twitter and all of these kind of things. They, they are, cause they're coming. They're coming hard for you if you don't. So you got to get in line, even though off the record, you're like, this is insane, right? This, this stuff's crazy. You look at her Twitter following and you look at a lot of these other things. You're like, wow, her Instagram, her gram and that gram are rolling, but she's got her posse. But what do they do? How much of a how much say do they have? Right? How much say should a should a worker have? I don't know. I want input from from person that works for me. Absolutely, I do. But in the end, it's my butt. It's my business. It's my dollars. It's my risk. And because of that, you're getting a job. You're getting paid. I want to hear what you have to say. But at the end of the day, you walk away if everything goes to hell in a handbasket. I don't. If it falls apart, it's my money loss, not yours. But there, it's not just her. It's a perfect example uh, of this. If you didn't hear this yesterday... Uh, because they're rolling out. They want to get this, you know, the fight for 15, the living wage, all of these kind of things. And it's and the, the class warfare is going on here. 
And it's easy to demonize successful people of all of these. They've got all of these things. You don't have any of these things. And the only reason anybody has any of these things, the only reason at all that anybody has any of these things is because they've stepped on other people's backs and stolen all their hard work. And that's it. Right? That's it. So in Hanomar, who is uh, one of the new uh, uh, Congress people, right, was questioning a McDonald's worker as their this push is, is is on now, and it's all about let's demonize the top. So the CEO of McDonald's pay, gets paid twenty one point eight million dollars. Uh, can can you share with us what? Uh, someone in your position at McDonald's gets paid annually? Not that much. <laughs> Not even a, a fraction of that. But I, I make uh, $11 an hour at my job currently. $11 an hour. That's what he makes, right? He gets paid some $21 million. Yeah, that's what he did make last year. Now, salary was $1.5 million. That's what the salary was, right? That's what the salary, the salary was $1.5 million. The bonuses, the stock options, all of this stuff added up to that. So just on it, he made $21.5 million. But it's, again, this is a moral thing. So the, the median uh, pay for a McDonald's worker um, was seven thousand dollars in two thousand and seventeen, and that is the the pay gap between uh, the CEO that's making twenty one point eight uh, to the um, seven thousand that uh, a worker who has put in forty hours uh, a day gets paid. Well, it's not forty um, hours a day. And to we me, that. that just morally does not sit well. Yeah, morally it doesn't sit well with you. Again, this is all about control. It's the justice that they're bringing in. They're doing all these things. It's about demonizing the top, but also realizing as you demonize that top, you need what the top has because you got to take some of that to redistribute it. Everybody always screams, you know, Reaganomics didn't work. Trickle-down economics doesn't work, but it seems to work for the government, right? That's what you guys want to do. You essentially want to go out and tax as much as you can to trickle it down to the people you think deserve it the most. You're promising people the world. And you do it through class warfare. They're evil, they're bad. We need more of what they got. The screaming of the 70% taxes over X amount of dollars. Th- this kind of stuff right here, you sit back and you just shake your head. But it's coming. Portions of the Green New Deal disaster, whatever you want to call it, some of that stuff is coming because guess what? There is more that don't have, that are frustrated, that felt like they've been sold a bill of goods and have been indoctrinated in colleges from the last umpteen years that are going to get out there and they're going to look around and say, I want that. Go get that and give me some of that. That's what I want. And I don't think people understand It may not be all because it's impossible to do all. But to do enough to radically change who we are, oh, you bet your candy ass there's enough for them to do that. You bet. And when you're telling everybody that you get free ice creams, free unicorns, free health care, free everything, And all we have to do is just make sure that those bad, evil people pay all of their fair share. And we're going to let you guys decide what that fair share may be. That's scary. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us. Six days. Six days for you. To be a winner when it comes to Valentine's Day. Or for you to look like a fool because you got that cheap chocolate. Bleh, the convenience store running into the pharmacy, buying some flowers off some guy at the side of the road. Come on now. 
Be smart. 1-800-Flowers.com. That's smart. 24 roses. Red ones. Right? So at first you can get 18 for twenty nine ninety nine, but I know you're better than that. And you're going to go, hey, you know what? I'm going to throw another 10 bucks on that and get 24 red roses because that's how much I love her. What are you waiting for, guys? Come on. Win at Valentine's Day. Don't be the guy that sleeps on the couch and gets yelled at. Win at Valentine's Day. It's simple. It's easy. They're picked at their peak, shipped overnight. They're going to be fresh. She's going to be amazed. You're going to win, win, win. Maybe she'll even let you pick a movie or something if you guys go out. He's like, hey, honey, I'm going to take you out. I got this, all this stuff. We have an early dinner. Maybe you oh, would like, go see movies. He's like, mm-hmm. yeah. Win at Valentine's Day. Twenty nine ninety nine for 18 Red Roses. Upgrade it for $10 more to 24 bucks. Don't be a cheapskate. Come on now. Pick your delivery date. You know which day that's going to be. Let 1-800-Flowers handle the rest. They're my Rose Authority. Make them yours. 1-800-Flowers.com. To get these 18 Red Roses for twenty nine ninety nine or upgrade to 24 which you're going to do for $10 more, go to 1-800-Flowers.com. When you do, click on the radio icon, enter code Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N, simple and easy, 1-800-Flowers.com, code Benson. Hurry, offer ends today. It's the Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. This is nominated for four Grammys. All the Stars is the name of it. Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Best Rap, Sung Collaboration. (laughs) Best Rap, Sung Collaboration. (laughs) Like, it's rap, but it's also sung. And best song written for visual media. While the Black Panther soundtrack racked up, uh, because it was on the Black uh, Panther soundtrack, also has two. One for album of the year and best score soundtrack for visual media. So there you go. Kendrick Lamar and I think it's S-Z-A. Would you Z-Za? Za? I don't even know. I mean, I just, again, why are you on my lawn? (laughs) Why are you on my lawn? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. How long, the question is, how long until the pictures get out of Bezos and his unit, the $100 billion unit, And his girlfriend. How long until they surface somewhere? Because now that Bezos has put it out there, that I'm not going to take any crap from you guys at the Inquirer and that you've got those pictures and you're telling me to do stuff in the post and and, and, and all of this. Now that you guys are doing that, right? Because that's kind of where this went now that he wrote this blog thing. uh, Now that you've done that, Right, David Pecker over there at the Inquirer, so <laughs> aptly name. Uh, and they're going to be like, well, you know, you didn't want it to deal with us, and so we're just going to slowly but surely leak these somewhere. And, uh, you know, when does that happen? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. You know, we're a week away from potentially another Shut down. I mean, think about that for a second. We're a week away from potentially another shutdown. And you're not hearing a lot about that. We had the State of the Union this week, right? And then we've got the Green Deal that was rolled out. You still have the blackface controversy and then the sexual assault controversy in Virginia. And now you've got the Bezos and the Billion Dollar Wiener and the National Enquirer and the fight that's there. And then Whitaker is is getting grilled today. It's it's very interesting that there's not a lot. And the rumor is that maybe they're getting close to doing something. So we'll see. We'll see what takes place. And if, if Trump's going to get barriers rather than a wall in some of the places he thinks will be helpful. 
or this time next week, we could be heading into yet again another shutdown. And we didn't think that ended well for Trump in the first one. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Your final Friday useless information for this week. New Mexico's first graduating class in 1893 had one student. His name was Sam Still. He was shot and killed before graduation. They posthumously awarded him a degree just a few years ago. It's your useless information today. Have a great weekend. We'll do it again on Monday. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.